Hey guys, welcome to book review 124. Uh, it's a little bit noisy, so I'm hoping this all picks up. Uh, today I am going to re be reviewing The Cave Temples of Magal. Let's see if you can see my face here. Uh, anyway, this is a book, uh, it's kind of a picture book about uh, the cave temples and their importance placed uh, in Buddhism's spread to China and how Buddhism spread along the Silk Road and the specifics of the site itself, uh, which include uh, many cave paintings as well as, they're not there anymore, but uh, were found in a large cache of uh, old Buddhist documents. Um, something important about the uh, caves of Macau, 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 uh, is that uh, because it's so isolated in western, in what is now western China, um, along the Silk Road, uh, a lot of the destruction that happened to um, Chinese, you know, artistic pieces or history or recorded documents uh, in the first millennia, um, from uh, things from that time period. Uh, are in historical archive there, and we get really an insight into um, what Macau looked like, uh, Macau, uh, as well as China. Um, let's see. You can see it's very much like a picture book. I definitely do want to get some of these pictures shown. Uh, I think it's like a historical scene. I think that's like a ruler. Uh, it gives a lot of the context for these paintings. Um, kind of something interesting about the caves is that uh, they weren't destroyed even though that there were multiple rulers and multiple um, uh, groups that tried to control it along the Silk Road because of its importance in terms of uh, trade. Everyone from the Tanguts uh, to the Mongols, both northern kind of steppe tribes, uh, the Chinese obviously to the east. Um, eventually, uh, Muslim rulers to the west that came in under their influence, uh, as well as the Tantric influence from uh, Tibet, which is kind of a very distinct line of Buddhism that's different from the uh, more historical line of Buddhism that um, uh, was initially, initially the Magal cave paintings were found in. Uh, something else kind of interesting is that uh, the Greeks, of all people, had a very slight influence on Buddhism spread to China. Uh, this primarily being that uh, the historical uh, Buddha, uh, Garnwa Buddha, or whatever his name is, lived in 400 AD, but was around, I believe it was like 125 or 150. Maybe even in the 200s, I don't remember. But it, uh, when Buddhism left India and started uh, traveling along these historical trade routes, was the exact same time that uh, Alexander the Great was reaching his most uh, Western, no, excuse me, most Eastern influence uh, in his empire. And so there's even some Hellenic uh, influence in the arts if it's very minor compared to the overwhelming, you know, Indian and uh, Chinese influence. Um, let's see, what else we got in here? I can take pauses here because I can always, uh, you know, show some pictures about like uh, what was going on and stuff. Um, they talked kind of uh, about how the the Magao uh, caves were founded. Um, or refounded, I guess you'd say. Uh, so, uh, the historical time period where the paintings were taking place was, I believe, about 300 to about 1100. And even though Magao wasn't initially uh, conquered by an Islamic state, it eventually came under the influence of um, Islam and uh, its people eventually converted, at which point, you know, the Buddhist uh, history there uh, was no longer relevant to the people that lived there, at least in terms of what they believed. Of course, by this point, Buddhism had firmly implanted itself in China, 
and so we can kind of see the effects of uh, this important kind of way station, if you will, uh, on Buddhism's way towards China. Um, but the refounding happened in the early 1900s. Oh, it's something else I should say about uh, why uh, the Magao Caves kind of floundered. Uh, I mentioned Islam, but to a larger degree, or at least to an equally larger, equal degree, um, the Silk Road kind of started losing influence as sea routes were opened up. This is more in the 1400s, initially by Portugal and then by a whole host of European countries that uh, made trade uh, via uh, the great ocean ways of the world uh, more efficient and uh, more cost effective than transporting things overseas. So not only did these areas convert to Islam, they also kind of uh, fell in their importance. Um, the Magao Cave uh, 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 sculptures, caves, um, are not actually a city in and of themselves, but they're 25 miles from uh, da Dan Guan, Dan Guan, I believe, uh, that survived uh, this entire time as a city. So it never truly fell to the dusts of the western deserts of China. Uh, but many smaller examples of uh, Silk Road way stations did and were buried under the sands. It should also be mentioned during this time period, Dan Guan uh, uh, suffered economically and was no longer the, uh, not the central, but a central economic trading post in Arapat um, between uh, various countries. It just it lost influence uh, to the sea routes. But in uh, the early 1900s, um, this was when European colonialism, you know, like in the Victorian era and the second French era, was really uh, in the midst of trying to colonize or um, really find out every last parcel on earth in which to either colonize or determine that its people were too stubborn and strong so that they would give away colonization towards uh, localized rule. Um, this is also when the Chinese uh, Manchu dynasty was at its weakest uh, and also during the early Republican period, um, at which case uh, oh geez, uh, influence from other countries via trading, uh, discoveries, things like that uh, came in. And so what essentially happened is, um, I believe his name is Linart. But they were essentially uh, a Frenchman and an Englishman, as well as later uh, Central Beijing, once they found out what was going on. And a Japanese expedition uh, essentially founded these caves. The British one was first, uh, but the Frenchman was the one that really uh, took the greatest amount of scrolls. Now they took some artwork, but a lot of the artwork is on the walls themselves. So outside of, and this did happen, chiseling out sections of wall, um, which would be just too large to do that on a scale that would affect the greater majority of caves. Um, it was really the scrolls and the historical documents that got um, taken out of the Magao Cave complex. Um, and there's a lot of debate about whether that was uh, correct or not. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these uh, documents still exist in London and in Paris and in uh, the Beijing uh, Central uh, Museums there. Um, you know, in, in museums, of course, in London and uh, Paris. Um, so, yeah, uh, so that was essentially the initial sort of raid. But then, of course, once there's the raid, uh, people kind of withdraw and realize, hey, maybe this wasn't um, as great as it should have been. Uh, and it should, it should also be qu uh, questioned what the long-term effect of uh, these uh, documents was going to be. You know, it's nice to think that things can be lost to time and these lost empire, but the truth of the matter is, is that um, nature was affecting not so much the documents, but definitely the walls. And so without rediscovery, if you will, um, there would just be further deterioration and then... Uh, not just like abandonment, but truly destruction of 
uh, these historical caves and whatnot. Um, it talks pretty extensively about the uh, various gods. Ooh, there's a good picture. It says, uh, you can see that, uh, you know, it, it'll have like text about like the history of the place here, but then it'll have like multiple examples of like uh, quotes and stuff that describe the pictures. Um, let me see if I can't find some cool pictures. Uh, this area is kind of uh, in an area that's an oasis town. That's what a lot of the Silk Road was. It's obviously not a uh, photo from the wall, but is a historical document from the, or a historical picture from the early 1900s. Dude, there's a real good picture. I believe that's a uh, Bach de Vida. Yeah, Bach, Bach de Vida. Um, and uh, Bach de Vida, is essentially a lot of what these uh, wall paintings were is they're either of the Buddha himself or of some sort of like pattern design that uh, well, was not merely geometric, but was like the repetition of image that you see a lot. Uh, but then there were uh, probably the greater majority uh, are Bhaktivedas, which are um, enlightened beings that choose to, rather than ascend to Nirvana, uh, come back onto Earth and help others in their quest for enlightenment. Um, I mean, that's a cool one. That's kind of one that has like a re repeating pattern that I was talking about. You see that multiple times. Oh, and here's this guy that I was talking about. What's his name? Uh, Paul Pilat. Uh, yeah, and he was the guy that was uh, from Paris. See, the guy from Britain didn't know uh, uh, Chinese, and so he'd uh, written Chinese, and so he didn't really know what he was looking at, whereas the guy from Paris knew what he was looking at and knew what to look for in terms of not only getting documents, but uh, the important documents as well as not collecting like multiple of the same documents, uh, if you will. There's another good picture. Yeah. See, that's the, the cave pattern. There's been extensive work in, uh, oh yeah, this is a real good one. Extensive work in uh, restoration uh, of these cave areas. Let's see, there you go. Uh, yeah, in addition to um, the cave paintings, there's also statues. And something that I found interesting in terms of the art is that they're all sort of like incorporated in the sense that you won't have like, it's not like in a lot of Western art where you'll have like a statue and you'll have a painting. Uh, you'll have these wall frescoes and then like the um, statues will be slightly in front of them and they'll incorporate into the design uh, of the wall pattern itself. So it's a very much sort of an integrated approach uh, to art. Uh, it was thought that these uh, uh, caves were built not not just for uh, art for art's sake, if you will, but uh, obviously, you know, I mentioned the Buddhism there, uh, much like early Christianity there, uh, for a religious purpose, to give religious meaning, to, for religious awe, etc., etc. But not all the caves were for this. There were actually multiple caves that, like, monks would live in or would just be bare and for meditation. But of course, from an artistic and a historical point of view, an empty cave doesn't uh, uh, provide a whole lot, but it's the, and there's a lot of caves on this complex, it's the multitude uh, of uh, frescoed caves, of uh, caves with statues in them, caves with historical documents that really uh, uh, give an idea of the place. Let's see if I can't find a picture of uh, some of the restoration work. There you go, that's like one of the, that's like the, probably the biggest architectural piece on the ground. Uh, because they're mostly caves and because this is a remote location, uh, architecture, and because architecture falls apart easier than caves do, um, yeah, I should actually mention that. Uh, there aren't as many historical architecture pieces there. Now, there was a monastery uh, which has since fallen down because of flooding, because of, uh, even though this is a, the caves are along a river, so there's both flooding, but there's also drought, which brings in sands and destroys things as well. Um, but there's also, uh, the monastery has been destroyed and there were seven uh, uh, pagodas, of which I think two 
uh, or left. Uh, you know, I can't really seem to find a picture of, uh, oh, here you go. It's kind of a picture of some restoration work. Uh, and something interesting about these is they're not, uh, the pictures is that they're not sealed very well. So it really does take a yeoman's work to make sure that no further deterioration uh, of these artworks uh, happens so that uh, uh, people can enjoy them throughout, you know, the future, throughout the, the future, future, future history. That's not the right one. Well, anyway, check it out. Cave Temples of Miguel by Whitfield, Whitfield, and Anu. Easy read. I read it in about three days. Tons of great pictures, tons of great insight into uh, this very interesting uh, historical uh, piece. Uh, really a piece of the puzzle when it comes to Buddhism, when it comes to Chinese history, when it comes to East Asian art. Uh, check it out, you guys. It's good. Uh, cave Temples. Cave Temples? Yeah. Cave Temples of Macau. All right, see you guys. Bye.